Michigan gets about 170 days of sunshine a year, which means most of the time it looks like this. When Harbor Freight said it has a cheap solar kit that works in cloudy conditions, I had to see it for myself. You know, I don't have a lot of experience with solar and at 150 bucks, this just seemed like the perfect kit to test. Will it keep my DIY power station charged when I'm off grid? Or will it just be an expensive sunshade? Stick around because by the end of this, I'll let you know if this thing is worth it. In Michigan's wilds, a craftsman stands alone against the late winter winds, a DIY soul hunting solar power. The Thunderbolt Solar Kit, $150 of Harbor Freight's finest, beckons him through the storm. With a groan, he seizes it, a tinkerer's burden. Forged in these frozen lands, a lone pallet bears his prize. The storm rages, daring him to break it. This lone craftsman approaches his latest find, cautious yet determined. Ah, but what's this? An unexpected hitch, a primitive scroll clinging desperately to its host. Ah, a second emerges, identical to the first, yet somehow more disappointing. A third, the pattern is undeniable, the craftsman presses on, undeterred. Four panels. But what's this? He peers into the void, seeking something more. A missing treasure? A hidden secret? Having extracted his prize, the craftsman enacts the ancient ritual of disposal, yeeting the empty vessel into the abyss. Our craftsman begins the tricky job of carefully digging up his treasure. He has to be really precise and patient too. One wrong move and this delicate thing might not make it. Finally, it's free. The craftsman looks closely at what he's found. It's thin, really thin. It looks like it might break if he even breathes on it. Just one puff of air could be disastrous. I'll save this for my therapy for later. Bubble pop, gotta love it. The craftsman, confident, perhaps too confident, chooses a path few dare tread, stacking the fragile relics atop one another. Yet another, the process repeats, the craftsman's enthusiasm wanes. At last, the sacred formation takes shape. Three now stand, a monument to solar ambition. And now, a final act of defiance. With a mighty throw, he casts the weightless burden aside. <coughs> Not quite as dramatic as planned. Hey, looky there, there's blue lights. That must mean there's power to it already, right? Right. Owner's manual and safety instructions. And now the craftsman turns his attention to the solar panel's structural ingenuity. A stand, flimsy yet functional. A bold attempt at stability, but can it withstand the trials ahead? Behold the Hydra of Power. A tangled beast, its many heads writhing in search of the sun's gift. Each head, an SAE connector, awaits its feast of photons. Ancient, powerful, mildly annoying to untangle. But one head, the Alpha, connects to the lifeblood of the system. It must not fail. And so the craftsman embarks upon the next phase of his quest, venturing into the great unknown. With great care, he positions the first panel, ensuring optimal sun exposure, except Upside down, a bold strategy. Let's see how it plays out. One becomes two, two becomes three, a solar empire takes shape. At last, the final piece is placed. The array is complete. The craftsman steps back, his creation standing before him. And yet the sun remains absent, a cruel jest from the heavens. The first head is tamed, but the hydra is far from defeated. With skill and patience, the craftsman subdues another. Two heads down, yet the beast writhes still. The elements conspire against him. Cold gnaws at his fingers. The hydra resists, but he does not yield. At last, the final battle. The hydra's last head, unruly defiant. With one swift motion, the craftsman delivers the final blow and sealing its fate. The beast is conquered. The power is his. The hydra has been tamed, but victory is not yet claimed. The craftsman vanishes into his lair, seeking the final piece of his master plan. And there, he returns, carrying the core of his creation, a device of his own making. 
the heart that will drink the sun's energy. Carefully, he places the vessel at the altar of the sun. Soon, the great exchange will begin. With a single motion, he unveils the core. The chamber awaits its offering. Connection is made, the flow of energy begins, but will the beast comply? 14.4 volts, and there, the sacred symbol. A solar panel, an arrow, and the battery. The feast begins, the hydra submits, the battery is satisfied. In a desperate turn, the craftsman seeks wisdom from the one place he swore he'd never return, the manual. The ancient text has vanished, a self-inflicted curse. Ah, oh, good, surely enlightenment awaits. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, incredibly useful. And now the answer to the craftsman's greatest question. How much power flows through the system? The screen flickers, data unfolds, enlightenment approaches. 13.8 volts, a respectable number, but what does it mean? 10.8 volts, the wisdom deepens, or does it? Is this knowledge, or just numbers mocking him? And still, no what's. The great mystery remains unsolved. Then, as if the heavens take pity upon his plight, a break in the storm, a rare sight in these lands. And at last, the battery feasts. 14.4 volts, full, content, satiated. The craftsman has done his part, now the system rests. At last, the craftsman has uncovered what we have known all along, a revelation long in the making, indeed a bold strategy though perhaps not the wisest one. But fear not, for knowledge has been gained and correction swift, a lesson in humility, a triumph in perseverance, and most importantly, a step in the right direction. Perhaps next time, a glance at the manual before tossing it into the void. Acceptance, growth, and most importantly, progress. And so the journey concludes. The panels stand in formation, the hydra subdued, the power captured, a humble system, yet a mighty achievement. Will this system power an empire? No. But will it charge a phone, a fan, and a few lights? Absolutely. So after testing this out, here's the deal. The Thunderbolt solar kit, it's not going to power your house. But keeping my DIY power station running while I'm hunting, camping, fishing, whatever, it'll do just fine. And for 150 bucks, it's not a bad setup. And it seems to even be working in this Michigan unpredictable weather. Could it be better? Sure. But for a budget-friendly solar kit, I'd say it's worth it. And if you found this helpful, hit that like. And if you want to see how I'm using this thing on my next adventure, subscribe and stick around. There's more to come.